A very good evening and welcome to our Thursday night episode of Brett's Old Time Radio Show. I'm here with an episode of Whatever Happened to the Likely Lads. Now, talking of Likely Lads, I'm literally just home from the gym. A big shout out to my buddies Neil and Sean at Cobra Gym, where we've been smashing the weights today. Well... Sean has, but we've been very supportive. Uh, I'm sure you'd be made very welcome if you wanted to join them. However, welcome to my home. In beautiful Lime Bay, where it's cold, dark, and a bit windy this evening, I'll post you some pictures on my Instagram if you want to check it out to see where I am, as it's definitely not looking very welcoming today. There's a bit of a swell on, but don't worry. I'll just make you a quick cuppa, and we'll be ready for another episode of Brett's Old Time Radio Show. Huge thank you for joining me once again for our regular late-night visit to those dusty archives of old-time radio shows right here at my home on the south coast of the United Kingdom. I'm Brett, your host for our nighttime podcast. Welcome to another episode of Whatever Happened to the Likely Lads. Feel free to send me some feedback on the show if you get a moment. Brett's B-R-E-T-T at touradate.co.uk. UK. Don't forget, I also have an Instagram page and a YouTube channel, both called Brett's Old Time Radio Show, and it would be brilliant if you could follow me. This is our latest episode of Whatever Happened to the Likely Lads. Let me know what you think of the show, and if maybe you prefer our adventure episodes or the comedy ones. I think the most popular shows that we've got at the moment are Hancock's Half Hour on a Monday and Sherlock Holmes on a Tuesday. They do seem to be the ones that we get the most feedback on. Right, whatever happened to the likely lads? Bob and Terry have never worried too much about class until the day Bob becomes interested in Lorna Perrin, a girl from a highly respectable middle-class family. First broadcast on June the 11th of 1966. This is Whatever Happened to the Likely Lads and an episode called Friends and Neighbours. We present Rodney Buse and James Burlam as Bob Ferris and Terry Collier, better known as the Likely Lads. <laughs> There's a great affection between the young and the very old, and so it is between Terry and his granddad. When old Mr. Fox is on one of his rare visits, where else would they be on a Friday night but in the pub? Yeah, I must say, Terry, this pub's changed a bit since I was here last. Well, it's a long time since you've seen your grandpa. Come on now, sup up. Uh, I don't remember that last year. Ah. No. Why, does your heart good, you know, to watch you knock the top of a milk stout? Yes, Grandpa, now steady on. <laughs> Have you seen her getting down to those crates of empty? Yes, Grandpa. Yes. <laughs> oh, there she goes again. Grandpa, <laughs> take a grip of yourself. You'll do yourself an injury. Hey, up, look who's come in. Hey, up, Bob, over here. What's it, kiddie? You're in early. You remember me, Granddad, don't you, Bob? Oh, <laughs> Grandpa, it's Bob. <laughs> He's still one for the birds, I see. <laughs> He's just got a... Hey, Carrie Grant, look who's here. Hey? Eh? Hello, Wilfred. Oh, hello, funny lad. All right, then. Not too bad. How is it? Oh, fair the meddling. Still got a bit of the old bird, you know. Yeah, oh, no. Still can't complain. Come on, come on, we'll sit down. Uh, hey, the glass back, isn't she? Yes, yes. Uh, too big for you, though. Go on, sit down. I'll get you another stout. Fine, Bob? Yes, she is. Sitting down, sitting down. I'll be back in a minute. I, uh, I hear you're living round here now. Oh, I simply like. Aye. Makes a change, though. Oh, I see your faces. How's your mother? Oh, she's very well, thanks. Uh, Fine woman. Considering. Fine woman, yes. Grand luck. Yes, I know. Always liked your mother. Ha! <laughs> so have I. You are? <laughs> I said, so have I. I've always liked my mother. Oh, I <laughs> Yeah, I should hope so, too. She's a fine woman. Mind of a very sorry dear about your father. What? Your father. Fine woman. Very friendly. <laughs> but, um, he's been dead 12 years now. I know. I was very sorry to hear about it. Oh, God. <laughs> it's uh, your daughter's house, isn't it, where you're staying? Oh, I yes. Uh, at least the Terry's aunt, too. They've got to damn it, do you see? Oh, it's months. Here's your stout, Grandpa. Cheers. No, the thing is, Norman got this job and it meant leaving the house empty all that time, so they thought they'd shift him in while they were away. Mm-hmm. Not so bad. You know, I've moved the pigeons in and Bella's coming tomorrow. Never. You're moving Bella in? Never. Never. Mister. <laughs> but I'm the only one who knows how to look after it. I'll be there properly. Yeah, but when the neighbours complain. I don't know. Bless. They're a snooty lot. I've known them for ages. 
you know what they did? Those people next door, he wanted to do some washing the day after he'd moved in. That's yeah, just me on this. Ah, I just did on this. He always does them himself, you know. I always do them myself, you know. Do you? Uh, Good. Anyway. Yeah, on shirts and all. That's it, Grandad. Shirts and all. Now, belt up. Anyway. <laughs> He does them, and he hangs them out to dry in the front garden, because that's where the sun is, you see. That's where the sun was. Yes. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> there, Terry. Cheers. Anyhow, he's just putting up his clothes prop. When out comes her from next door, the Duchess. Asks him to take it down. Did you mind? We don't do things like that round here. Not on a Sunday. Never. Would you believe it? The told me to get them down. And did you? <laughs> <laughs> then what happened? I swore it did. <laughs> I thought it was being a Sunday. I was a lovely dry man, you see. I was wearing my long sun <laughs> Wait, though. The next day, she's doing her washing. Of course, that's all right. And anyhow, the line snaps. All are small, trailing in the mud. And do you know what they did? They blamed him. They said it was his fault, the line snapped. Yeah, they were. Yeah, straight up, didn't they? Ah, they did. Victimization. Ah, they accused us. But why? Because I cut the rope. <laughs> you cut it, you never told me. No, I'll tell the like a silly Uzi. <laughs> no, oh, so and so. So it's war now, is it? Well, I'm not worried. Oh, no, no. If he comes down to my front door, well, she'd get my piss in that job. <laughs> they wouldn't know, would you? Go on, Bob, buy him a drink. It's your round. Same again. Yes, well, I will, but um, I'll just get you to a drink because I've got to be off. All right. Where are you off to? I've uh, got a date. Hey, who's this bird then? It's no one you know, as a matter of fact. Her name's Lorna. Lorna? I don't know any Lornas. No, and I've no intention of letting you either. <laughs> it's a classy bird, this one. Yeah. That explains the new shirt, does it? And there's horrible smell on you. <laughs> You've got that tartan powder on again, haven't you? I thought you looked a bit pale. <laughs> what is it, anyhow? It's an adventure in masculine freshness. <laughs> Dear me. Oh, very smart, do not they? Yeah, it smells like a sponge bag. <laughs> that, that girl I've done to watch her, sponge bag. <laughs> well, you haven't changed much, have you? Careful, Lorna. Love you. You're on me. You're on me. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. you saw the devil, you. You've got me arm pinned, Lorna. Oh. oh. Bob, stop it. I'll be back soon. Mm. Oh, look, you've got powder all over your jacket. Mm. Bob, stop it. Really? Oh, I'll have to tie you up. And you straighten your tie. You're a bit rough, though. <sighs> Untamed. <laughs> Come on, though. Help us tidy up. Comb your hair and turn the telly off. Oh, it's worse than being married. Hey, can I have another sherry? No, you can't. They're bound to notice the bottle's gone down as it is. Anyhow, one's quiet enough. Yeah, you should see me after two sherries I got on my mind. <laughs> Look here, they come. Here, do I look all right? Yeah. Hey, get your shoes on. Well, I, I can't find... Where's where, where, where the new shoe? Oh, it must be under the chair. I can't find it. Where is it? Oh, God. Well, thanks for moving me up the seat in the centre of the lawn. Oh, uh, evening, Mrs. Perrin. Evening, Robert. Where's Lorna? Just put the kettle on, Bob. I thought she'd be back. Ah, uh, what have you two been doing with yourselves? Playing Watching cards. television. <laughs> Watching television and playing cards. Have you had a nice night? Oh, it was very pleasant. They've got a lovely home, haven't they, Martin? Oh, you're doing very well now, you know. You dogged the second branch. Did you see come dancing on television? Um, yes, we did. Oh, we were sorry to miss that. Who won then? Did we? Um, yes, yes, we did. Uh, I think we did. Oh, good. They'll be in the semi-final now, then. How did the formation team do, Bob? Oh, uh, I'm not sure. Just give me your coat, love. I'll hang it up. Did you miss the formation? Oh, well, uh, we were playing cards at the time. Oh, you were silly, love. They moved together so beautifully. Of course, you know, Robert, it wasn't so long ago that Mr. Perrin and I were dancing in that competition. Yes, I know. We were laughing American mainly, but later on, old time. That cup there was for the military two-step. Of course, Mr. Perrin did one of the best turns in the business. 
Oh, really? Well, Father, Bob doesn't want to listen to you going on about dancing. No, no, it's very interesting. Uh, I like ballroom dancing. Well, we don't do so much now. Not since Mr. Perry's arm. He can't, uh, you know what he's doing. He's doing. <laughs> Hello. Someone's left the shoe here. Oh, yes, that's mine. Um, it just fell off. <laughs> <laughs> Not very good laces on those shoes. Hey, I'm full of Mary's trifle. How's it been? Was there any trouble from next door, Lorna? Uh, no, without. At least I think so. All the lights have been off. Well, that means he's out drinking. He'll be back soon. Did Lorna tell you, Robert? We had this couple next door. Very nice they were. Uh, well, he's done very well for himself, and she... Uh, well, she's a bit... But anyway, they were very nice. And then suddenly they went away, just temporarily. But in the meantime, they'd given the house to her father. Well, I'd always thought she was a little bit, you know, common. But I had no idea. She was always sitting and wearing braces. Really? And leaving the top button of his father's on <laughs> Oh, God, I've lost mine. <laughs> well, he knew there'd be trouble the moment he moved in. Oh, yes. The very first night he came out here three times to borrow things. And you can tell the sort of person he was from what he wanted. A box opener, a jar of pickles, and a corn cluster. <laughs> I mean, we just don't have those kind of things. Of course, you can understand our oh, worry, Bob, can't you? I mean, hello, what's this button doing here? <laughs> no, the, the, the trouble is, he'd devalue the whole district in no time. Oh, yes, I can see, yes, I can imagine. He's got pigeons. Keeps them in the shed. But, of course, they're always over our side. They do all the business over Mr. Perry's azaleas. It's not right. Well, Sunday morning was the last straw. Oh, yes, Sunday morning was the last straw. Do you know, Robert? I know you'll find this hard to believe. On Sunday, he does his washing and hangs it up in the front garden. What? <laughs> no, Lorna. I can see that Bob's as shocked as we were. And imagine, I just had to go around there. What did he say? Oh, was most abusive. I couldn't bring myself to repeat it. And you know, Robert, the very next day... knocking at it. Like his knees next door, I shouldn't wonder. Not quite, lad. There. Five's up. Yeah, jammy. Nothing. And double fives for gay. Yeah, you old... Now, you see that noise, Tom? What's that? It's coming from the letterbox. Yeah, see that noise, Tom? It's like Jim's trying to get some sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Will you tell 
through the letterbox. <laughs> Didn't wake a face me, mind. Time I got to the door, he'd gone. If I'd caught him, his dancing days would have been over. <laughs> yes, well, there are two sides to everything, Terry. I mean, you must have done something to make him annoyed. They even object to his pigeons. Well, not everybody likes pigeons lurking all around their garden. Why not? What's wrong with them? The pigeons, not vultures. <laughs> Yes, but they make a mess, though, don't they? Well, that's a good thing, isn't it? I mean, for the garden, it's fertilizer. <laughs> you know, the best borders you've ever had this year. <laughs> if Bella could fly out of the richest land east of the Mississippi. <laughs> no, it's them. Um, they start everything. They've got a daughter who's just as bad. <laughs> you know nothing about her. What? Well, I, I mean, that, that's your trouble, Terry, isn't it? I mean, you're always making rash statements about people you know nothing about. All right, all right. Keep your shirt on. You're not coming anyway. No, I've told you. Well, I was hoping you'd give us hand with these groceries. Why have you bought so much? Is he planning a siege? <laughs> no, I was only supposed to get a few things, but I went to the supermarket. You know how you get carried away. Yes, you certainly did. Prawn chop suey for your granddad. <laughs> Clam chowder, what's that? Well, it's soup, I think. <laughs> mm, cream of tomatoes, more his style. Hungarian turkeys. Oh, Terry, fat-free yogurt. Well, it's a change. He might like it. It's for slimming. He can't afford to slim. I should think he weighs less than you, if that's possible. <laughs> <laughs> and what's this little bowl? Well, I got that with a girl, and it was a special offer. <laughs> I'll give him the air. I'll be off, then. Hope you enjoy yourself. Will our parents be there? Yes. And don't slurp your tea. I beg your pardon. You know what you're like with a cup of tea. Sounds as if you've fallen in. Now, well, better settle in nicely. Is he eating all the dinner? Come on, come on. Oh, what's the matter with his telly? They'll be done to the picture. Do you believe it? They'll be in the panic me now. I know, I know, but look at it, it's all haywire. Have this woman really need it on. Have you tried the horizontal thing? I've tried every rotten thing. No, there's something wrong with it. And I've got ten bob on this race. I've got half this week's pension. Oh, man. <laughs> Never done this before. Hasn't anyone else got a set? I don't know anyone else. Only the parents. Well, we could ask them. Only be for five minutes. Not much to ask. 
but never that yet. Well, they can't object to five minutes. I mean, it's an emergency, isn't it? Anyhow, it's a chance to settle things up. You can't just go on forever warring with your neighbours, tooth for a tooth and all that junk. Someone's got to make the first move. If I go around next door, I'm giving them an opportunity to make amends. I'm quite willing. I don't see why they shouldn't be. Oh, well, praise yourself. Hang on. I won't be long. Oh, good afternoon, Mrs. Perrin. I'm Mr. Potts' grandson, Terry. Pleased to meet you. What a very pretty dress. Oh. I thought, well, that is, we thought, both of us, that it was about time we sorted things out, made friends like us. Well, We'd I... like to apologise for any inconvenience we've caused you in the past few days. But you've got to live and let, haven't you? No use bearing grudges. Well, I'd I... like to think that from now on we can all be friends, bygones and all that junk, yeah. and I hope you will, well, accept our apologies in the spirit in which they're made. Oh, uh, well, I, I... My, it's a lovely day, though, but I was just thinking how nice your fun garden is looking. Oh, yeah. Well, I uh, take it we're friends now. Well, uh, uh, I mean, you accept our apology. Oh, uh, well, yes, of course. Be ungracious not to. No, I could have understood it if you hadn't. Just as long as you know there'll be no more trouble from our end. We just want to convince you of our goodwill. Oh, I can assure you that's all we'd have wanted. Well, I'm glad to have said, dear. Now, if you'll excuse me, I think the kettle's boiling. Oh, uh, while I'm here, Mrs. Perry, there was just one thing. I was wondering if I could look at your television set for a moment. Oh, well, I'm a It would only be for five minutes. Ours has gone wrong, you see. Only the grand of me have got a double on, and he doesn't get much pleasure in life, you know, being an old age pensioner. So I No, I'm afraid you can't. We're just about to have tea in the dark. Oh, well, I wouldn't bother you. I just washed the race and let myself out. You wouldn't know I was there. It's out of the question. What? I'm afraid I can't entertain the idea. Good afternoon. Right, you wait till Monday morning. I'll have your knickers trailing all over the roof. Oh, that boy. I've never heard anything like it. Really, the young people of today, the good job your father didn't hear what he said. Oh, I don't think he meant it literally about your knick... Uh, 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 I mean, no, he was he was referring to the washing line. I mean, I don't think he was actually going to. I mean, it wasn't your... Ne- oh. Can I give you hand with the washing up things? Ring him up, Bob. Ring him up and demand an apology. Me? Well, somebody ought to. I'll get the number for you. Oh, well, I mean, I... I, th- I think it's best just to ignore people like that, you know. They'll never learn. Well, he certainly shouldn't be allowed to get away with it. It's ringing. Oh, oh. right, <laughs> Hello? <clears throat> now, look, um, I insist that you apologise and <clears throat> don't let it happen again, right? <clears throat> Good. Who's that? Who's that? Um, it's me next door. I'm a friend of the family. Well, that's mm. your rotten look. Why should I apologise anyhow? They've had their chance. They've had their chance. It's people like that that cause all the trouble in the world today. What did he say? He said it's people like you that cause all the trouble in the world today. Now, now, listen. Tell him you're coming round. I'm coming round. To sort you out. To sort you out. You and whose army? Right, mate, I'll be ready any time. And you can tell her ladyship and her daughter... What was that? Oh, hang off. You can't talk to people like that. You go round. This has gone on long enough. Oh, no, Lorna. We can't ask Bob to fight our battles for us. I'll get your father. No, Bob's the best person. You can't ask father, not with his arms. Well, uh... oh, go on, Bob. You don't mind, do you? No, of course not. Just leave it to me. What about that then, Grander, eh? Coming round, is he? Good. Who oh, is it that mess up the fella? I don't know. Probably one of the formation dancers. <laughs> oh, he'll be all right, then. Oh, don't you worry. Any trouble from him and he'll get my boot right up his bus and over. <laughs> I'll set Bella on him. Aye. Hey, there he is. Right, I'll get it. Now, I'll get it. This I must say. Hey, come in, Bobby, lad. Come in, come in. Hey, I... Hey. Look who's here, Terry. Hello, kiddo. Hey, you're just in time. We've got this twitch coming round from next door. <laughs> that wasn't very nice, what you just said about Lorna. What? Or her mother. I am that twitch from next door. <laughs> you? Speaking. You're not with that. Was that you on the phone? It didn't sound like you. Well, it was me. That happens to be my girlfriend next door. What? Well, I didn't know that this was your auntie's house until you came home last night. You were there last night? You never said so this morning. Well, I, I didn't want to get involved. I, I don't want to take sides, Wilfred. You see, it's embarrassing, the position I'm in. It's them that started all the trouble. Look, man, I'm not sticking up for them. I don't like them very much either. It's just that, well, she's my bird, and I, I just want to go back and say there'll be no more trouble. You mean you're going back, isn't there? Yes. Tea's ready. <laughs> Tea with them? Won't you have tea with us? We've got some Hungarian gherkins. 
No, really, Wilfred, thanks. You mean you're not with us, then? You're still on their side. Oh, it's not a question of side. Oh, but it is, mate. Now, now, please, please. Don't, Raoul, please don't. Now, stand up. Please. He's oh. not having any tea. And don't you take sides either, you old stirrer. Never mind who's right and wrong. Ignore the main issues. I am just appealing to you as a mate. I've got a date with that bird tonight, and her parents are out. So tonight could be... Well... <laughs> and I don't want anything to foul it up, that's all. Oh, well, that's different. Why didn't you say something? That's different, isn't it, Grandad? Oh, aye, that's different. You go ahead, Bob, and enjoy yourself. Well, call it a truce <laughs> and amnesty. I mean, if you can get your evil way with her... In a way, it's a victory for all of us against our parents. Thank you. I'll see you both tomorrow. Mind, don't let them corrupt you. You'll be joining the young conservatives next. <laughs> oh, Bob, you're back. What did he say? There'll be no more trouble. Just let's leave it at that. Oh, Bob, how can I ever thank you? Well, uh... <laughs> Oh, I'm very grateful, Robert. You handled it very well, didn't he, Martin? <laughs> I'm only sorry I didn't know what was going on. Oh, well, uh, it's all taken care of. We can forget about it now. Ah, I'll set tea in the garden. Shall we go through? Terry, lad. Terry, Bella's gone. Gone? Where's she gone? The pictures? Oh, she <laughs> got out there. I can't find her anywhere. Why, the cringe. Oh, come on, son. I'll be fine. Oh, Bella. Okay, okay. I'm coming. <laughs> I must say, there's nothing nicer than afternoon tea in your own garden on a warm summer's afternoon. Oh, and I must say, Martin, the garden looks a treat. Do have a sandwich, Robert. These are chopped egg, and those are salmon and cucumber. Uh, try one of Mrs. Perrin's sausage rolls while they're still warm. Oh, yes, thank you, I will. <laughs> very pleasant to sit out in the open, isn't it? You must come and help me with a spot of gardening, too. Thanks very much. Lorna, pack your father the sugar, will you? Oh, Robert, you've rendered us an invaluable service. I should think we've heard the last of those ruffians next door. <laughs> that was that. Hey, did you leave the gas on? <laughs> oh, I don't think so. Oh, no, I couldn't have done. <laughs> there it goes again. It seems to come from behind that tree. Oh, well, look, um, I'll, uh, I'll just go and see. Ah, I'm sure it's nothing, Bob. Yes, well, uh, I'll just check. Uh, I shall shout in a minute. Hey, Bob, here, man. What the hell's the matter with you? Are you trying to wreck everything? I've cracked it here, man. I'm sorry, kidder. Bella's escaped. What? Yeah, I thought I'd better warn you. Thanks a bunch. Are you all right, Bob? Oh, yes, fine. Uh, it was nothing, really. Uh, just one of nature's strange little quirks. So we were saying, we were saying, wouldn't it be nice if we all were dancing together? It'd be such fun. Well, I don't know if Bob would like that. Oh, I'm sure he would if we got up a nice crowd and went to the assembly room. I wonder if we should go indoors. Indoors? Why? Uh, well, I mean, it looks a bit cloudy and it might rain later. You don't want to get caught in it. Oh, it'll not rain today. Anyway, the garden could do with it. Oh, well, you know, I, I feel the cold. I, I've got a bit of a chest. <laughs> Yeah, I thought you liked the dog. Oh, yes, well, I do, but, um, didn't you want to watch Doctor Who? Whatever's the matter with you, Bob? Oh, nothing. I was just thinking of other people and... Oh, no, Bella. Who? <laughs> oh, come on now, Robert. Eat up those sandwiches. Do you like ham? Sometimes. Oh, God. What? Uh, <laughs> oh, heaven! Ah! You pig! <laughs> Oh, thank God for that. Oh, what a mess. <laughs> I suppose you're satisfied now. Hey? You rotten pig! <laughs> and James Furlong appeared as Bob and Terry, the likely lad. In today's story, friends and neighbours, Grandad was played by Bert Palmer and Mr. Perrin was played by Glenn Melvin. 
Mrs. Perrin was played by Noel Dyson, and Angela Lovell was the delectable Lorna. The Likely Lads is written by Dick Clements and Ian Lafene, and is adapted to radio by James Boland. The program is produced by John Dowell. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed our latest episode of Whatever Happened to the Likely Lads. We'll be bringing you another episode next week. And don't forget, we'll be back for Steptoe and Son tomorrow night, going live at 5 o'clock p.m. GMT. So make sure you're ready to check it out. You can email me on brett at touradate.co.uk and I would love to know your thoughts on the show. Thanks for listening. I'll be with you seven days a week, each and every week. And I'll see you next time on Brett's old-time radio show. Love you. Bye. <laughs>